All right, getting back to it. I've been putting this one off forever, forever. And you know why? Because I personally, and I know a lot of people do not like this opinion, I personally think this is the absolute worst faction you can take on a barbarian-styled settlement on the defense. Um, there are three to four ways you can play it and have it work. This is probably one of the most effective ways you can play it and have it work. Uh, but it is one of the more boring ways of playing this faction. Anyways, let's get back into it here. Uh, obviously, we're going to be taking the Lusitani Nobles because we don't really have a choice. They have Headhunt, which will exhaust us, even though it doesn't say it's going to. And we are going to take the uh, Strategist General. We could opt for the Commander General. It's not a bad choice in this instance due to the playstyle we're going to be going with this time. Um, and that's basically if they come in mass all at once with a bunch of units and we have to engage all at once with our units. Now, let's move on. I'm going to be grabbing some Iberian Swordsmen, a lot of them. We're filling up the rest of the roster with this. Oh, I forgot to mention. I mention it pretty much every time, but Strategist General has Second Wind and Battle Rhythm. Primarily, we're going to be focusing on throwing that on our General. Uh, you might be able to use it on some veteran shield warriors, but really, uh, you don't have that many high tier troops uh, in the build we're currently going with. So it's it really wouldn't hurt to take the other general. Anyways, getting back to the Iberian swords, we are going to be grabbing seven of these because we are playing with the one, two, four, max seven rules. Uh, so that's one archer, two pikes, and four or not one archer, one artillery, two pikes, and four missile units in total. And then max 7 of the same unit. And this is the same rules we are doing for our 1v1 tournament as well. Alright, so we got 7 of these guys. So, primarily, what well, they're kind of going to be used for utility, but they're also going to be used to get you some kills. Um, we want to be setting up kill boxes with these. We also want to be, uh, you know, cycling in and out for our veterans when they get exhausted, unless we have the general nearby to second win, which we probably will. But, I mean, like I said, they will potentially be hitting you in mass with units because of the play style we're going with for this one. Uh, this really isn't the best for team play if you, the t your teammate doesn't know what you're doing. Um, so you, you might have to explain that to them if you're in a Discord chat, uh, why you're holding in a certain way. Because their flank's going to be fairly exposed. It's it's going If you're playing against a faction that has archers, you're going to leave their flanks really exposed you do not have to play this specific play style if you're playing against a faction that doesn't have archers. Then this faction is perfectly fine. Uh, you can play just like normal. You don't have to do anything fancy. Anyways, so yeah. Primarily, cycling, setting up kill boxes, cycling in and out units, and also uh, they're going to be a lot of cannon fodder. That's a lot of their use because, again, there's two reasons that this faction really sucks is it just it gets countered by archers so damn easily so damn easily so the other thing it gets countered by is throw spears we're essentially letting them walk inside but again the biggest threat we have at that instance is the thorough spears and we don't really want to waste too much archer ammo on thorough spears we don't really want to waste any archer ammo on thorough spears if we can avoid it we might have to though so they're pretty much going to have to run in there, into the no-go zone, into the, uh, what do they call it in trench warfare? Uh, dead man zone? I don't, I don't remember the term for it. But anyways, we don't want to go into the no man zone with any other units but these guys and plug up those thorough spears because we cannot lose our variant slingers. We cannot lose those veteran shield warriors, but we can't let uh, those thorough spears just sit there and throw a pila. So we're going to have to throw these in and plug that up. Moving on, we've got our Iberian Scorpion, primarily used for killing high tier units. Also, it has a really high kill potential. You can get up to 300 kills with this on a good day. Uh, on your average, probably 150, 200, somewhere in there. Definitely 100 if you keep them out of archer range. And then our next thing, we are going to be taking a lot of Valeric Slingers. We're taking as many as we can possibly take. So we're taking the four Valeric Slingers. These are going to be our primary uh, our primary source of getting kills. Now, the reason we're doing this is because we really 
do not want to deal with archers. If they're coming in on a spot where it's blocked by a building, then you're in a lot of trouble. You're in a lot of trouble, because once they get inside, your army is pretty much shot. So anytime you can take out any archers with these is a plus, but we're going to have to hold with these, and this is where we start explaining the strategy a little bit more. Uh, on a barbarian-styled settlement, we're not really blocked by the walls at all, which sucks. Uh, definitely need that to block that arrow fire. But since we don't have that, we have to hold back even further to the point where we're almost on the capture point, or maybe even that we're on the capture point uh, with this specific play style. So we want the edge of our slingers range to be right at the edge of that wall, as usual, like I've explained multiple times, uh, just to prevent those archers from getting inside and then get back shots in a whole nine yards. So we'll go down to a quarter ammo and save it if they still have archers alive. Keep that quarter ammo, but use the rest of your ammo on anything you see in front of you, because you got to even the odds here. So we're holding back here. Now, the rest of your infantry line, including the Iberians, until those thorough spears start getting close to that range, should basically be on top of your archers. You want that fight to take place, or, or your slingers, you want that fight to take place as far back as possible. You might set up some kill boxes in here, maybe with the Iberians, maybe with some veterans, but uh, just to make sure that you are not in range of any archers. You do not want to have one foot of a unit stepping out and getting hit by an archer. I don't care. It's not good. Uh, along with that, just try not to have allies around, because uh, oftentimes they'll just block your kill boxes, and it drives me insane. It drives me insane. It is one of my biggest pet peeves. In this game is when people plug up my kill boxes i think i've said it a million times already but this is a kill box i'm letting them come in this pocket okay that's the idea when you block that pocket that stops my slingers from shooting units in the side that are engaging with these units or even shooting down if i'm sitting on up on top of a hill here the closer they get the better angle i have to shoot down I mean, it's a V formation. I can shoot in the side this way. I can shoot in the side this way. But if you block that, then I'm just shooting your guys in the back. Drives me nuts. Anyways, moving on. So we got that. Uh, the next couple things we're grabbing is the Lusitani Gorillas. Now, we could opt to swap out the Scorpion for another Lusitani Gorilla. I don't think the Lusitani Gorillas have as much kill potential as the Scorpion does, so we're only taking three. And this is strictly to just get a full 20 stack. You don't need to get a full 20 stack. Definitely better builds. Lots of better builds that are not full 20 stacks. And probably, specifically, uh, Lusitani can definitely build some of those builds. And we're moving on again. Getting the Veteran Shield Warriors. Uh, I guess we're not moving on quite yet. Lusitani Gorillas are basically throw spears with very little armor. Uh, so again, we're setting up kill boxes with these to get that peel off into the side. And a kill box is basically any time I can either let a unit in and I can outflank them with units, or I can set up and throw pila at those units' backs or sides. Okay? So that's the idea with the loose tiny gorillas. Great choice for that. And then we have the veteran shield warriors. This is our melee troop. This is our kill potential right here. Another one of our big kill potentials. Each one of these guys, if they're used later on in the game, which they should, or in advantageous position, should be getting close to 200 kills. Very easily close to 200 kills. So, uh, But on average, we're going to say 150. So between four of them, 150, that's that's a lot. That's like 600 right there. Galeric Slingers should be about 200 apiece. 200 apiece. So uh, they, they absolutely almost need to have that. And then on a bad day, 100 here. And we'll say 50 for each of these. You're not looking too bad there as far as your kill potential. Now, you could opt to swap out the veterans for the Lusitani Spearmen if you really wanted to focus on getting kill boxes set up with your Balearic Slingers as a supporting unit or your, your, or your gorillas as, uh, your Lusitani Gorillas as a supporting unit with their Pila uh, because they do have a decent amount of armor. Uh, and some holding potential there. So you could hold a little bit further up and feel a little bit more comfortable doing that. It might not be the best choice because uh, you're, you're taking away a lot of your kill potential by, by not taking the veterans, but it is a really tough play style just playing with Lusitani at all again. I can't not emphasize this enough. 
our barbarian subtle supplement on the defense if you're playing like this it's going to be tough now there are some uh, like i said there are some other play styles mainly having to do with uh guerrilla warriors you can do the whole guerrilla warrior throw them all out there right in front of somebody's army and attack them i've seen it a thousand times it's nothing special There is another one you can do, which I think we've done with Syracuse. If you look at the Syracuse build or, uh, yeah, the Syracuse build, I explain it uh, fairly decently, I think. And I think I might even reference one of the uh, streams where we actually did use Syracuse. But there's a sally out tactic that you can use with Lyric Slingers that should even the odds. It is another play style you could do. And you could potentially even do it with this build. So I definitely go check that out. And finally, there was one more thing we were going to mention here. I'll just look through it here, double check real quick, make sure we got it. That is just about it. Hopefully, well, I guess it's not going to come back to me. I think that's going to be the end of it here. Hopefully it helped you out, and I really hope you don't choose Lucitani on the defensive barbarian style settlement. Anyways, thank you guys. Goodbye.